Hello again folks. This is Dr. Ahmed Farooqi and today I would like to introduce you a very important regression technique that is called quantized regression. Folks, you know you can divide your data into 2, 4, 10, 100 equal parts uh, and collectively these are called quantiles and the regression based on these quantiles we call the quantile regression. So let's start what we have today in our presentation. So I'll give you a short introduction, some basic concepts that are associated with regression. I will give you the introduction about the quantile regression, then how we build a model, how, we estimate, how can we estimate the model, how can we fit a model to a, an equation or example, I'm sorry, uh, to an example. And finally, I will give you the code to estimate that, uh, you know, the example, right? So let's start with the introduction. Uh, you know the idea of uh, the regression came from genetics with a very, you know, the renowned stat statistician Francis Galton in late 19th century. Folks, Galton observed that the parents with tall, uh, uh, tall parents of tall children and short parents of short children. Also, he observed that though the tall parents have tall children, but their average height is less than their parents. Similarly, uh, short parents have short children, but their average height is uh, more than their uh, parents' height. So you can see in both situations, both averages are going back towards the normal average height, right? So this phenomena of going back towards average called regression. But today, regression is used to study the relationship between a response variable with at least one predicted variable. By developing model with certain parameters, these parameters are then estimated, and the fitted model can be used for uh, prediction and forecasting. For example, we can say uh, there is a relationship between systolic blood pressure and uh, age, right? And we can uh, study this relationship. We can uh, estimate the parameters, and we can use for the future forecasting. Uh, similarly, we can say uh, there is a relationship between uh, blood loss, right, and uh, the weight, right. The people who has more weight, they are like uh, there is more chance that they have they they they, have, they can have more blood loss, right, if they have any accident or some kind of other problem. So basically, a regression is the relationship between uh, one response variable and uh, more than one predictor variable. Uh, we can have more than one response variable and we can go to advanced statistics and we can study those relationships also. But <clears throat> let's start with some ba basic concepts. Scatter plot, if you plot two variables uh, and you can see the dotted points and this is your scatter diagram tells you the relationship. A uh, response variable, a dependent variable, yi, is a pre-assumed effect whose values depend upon another value. This response variable can also called outcome variable or explained variable, right? As I gave you an example, the systolic blood pressure depend upon the age. So systolic blood pressure is your response variable that can be related or that depend can depend upon age or gender could be this could depend upon gender also right like female have more systolic blood pressure as compared to male right similarly the predictor variable is your independent variable or covariate we can call it a covariate factor regressor explanatory variable and this is a pre-assumed cause right as i said uh, your let's take an example for example you can say your gas bill is uh, associated with your number of units you used, right? So number of units a, are your predictor that can predict your monthly gas bill, right? And uh, the value of the independent variable con under con researcher control. It means that the unit is in your control. If you use, uh, like you, you can see in the, when there's a hot weather, and people use uh, uh, air condition, but normally they use 
uh, say when they they are going for sleep right or in the afternoon when there is pretty hot right so it's on in your control so predictor variable is in your control right so this is a predictor this can be manipulated by the researcher linear relationship if a scatter plot shows you a like kind of a straight line relationship straight line graph that relationship is called linear relationship otherwise it is called non linear relationship model is basically an equation where you can put your uh, variables and your uh, estimators slope you can see in the model y is equal to alpha plus beta x this beta is the regression coefficient of x this is called in mathematics we call it a slope right that tells you the average change in your response variable yi due to one unit change in your predict predictor variable xi for example if the answer of your slope is 2 it means for every one unit change in a predictor variable uh, xi there is a two unit average change in your response variable right simple linear regression if you have only two variable you want to study the relationship and it's like a graphs look like a straight line that relationship is called simple linear regression you can study that relationship uh, quantile regression folks in researcher a uh, uh, researcher in medical social and behavior science they are always interested to study the relationship uh, and the main objective is to estimate to build a model to estimate the model and to then use that model for the prediction right uh, but the problem is the presence of outliers and non normality of the population distribution is a challenge and that can increase your error variance and reduce your power if you will use a traditional parametric statistics right keep in mind in medical social and behavior science your data you will not see your data that is normally distributed right at least 95% of the time i am mostly i mostly work with the medical data and i can i, I never seen Uh, the data that is normally distributed right always whenever whenever i plot the data the histogram the i i used to apply some kind of test uh, to test the normality i always end up with the uh, you know the rejection of my null hypothesis the data follow the normality so be careful while you are using your uh, analysis so i right, don't like uh, play with statistics like a clay do statistics the right way right and one of the disadvantage of your standard ols method uh, it does not fit well when you have some outliers in your response variable or in a predictor on both right or if you take if you sample uh, the data from a non normal population your statistical technique will not be appropriate what happened then you will end up with a misleading you know the conclusion for example if you uh, if you have an outliers and non or a non normality of your data and you fit a simple linear regression what happen you you will not get a true estimate your estimates are misleading and if you don't have a true good estimate true estimate what happen is you won't get a true standard error if you won't get a true standard error you cannot apply any kind of test ultimately you will get uh, you will get uh, you will reach in a conclusion that that could be a misleading conclusion so be careful uh, so there there are uh, there is one more thing that i i would like to talk about uh, you know the simple regression that fit uh, the the relationship on the average but what if you want to study the relationship above the average or below the average right so you need some kind of quantile regression technique right so there are several alter alternative for ols right uh, quantile regression is one of the alternative this this was introduced by uh, roger quenker and gilbert bassett late in 1978 42 years ago right 
uh, to study the relationship between the response var variable y with at least one predictor variable x side at different quantiles like 10th, 25th, 50th, which is median, 75, 90th percentile, and so on. Right? That will give you the clear picture, a clear picture of your distribution, not just on the average. And it is also to be noted that the you know the ordinary least square regression models the relationship between one or more predictor in between your response variable and at least one in independent predictor and the this relationship is at the on the conditional mean of the response variable at given xi right in contrast the quantile regression models the relationship between xi and the conditional quantiles of yi given xi and so it is especially useful in a and is very applicable where you are looking for the for the extreme values such as if you uh, for example if you're trying to study a relationship between food expenditure and income level right that will give you an average income level or uh, the food expenditure uh, average level relationship what if you if you are interested in the upper or lower uh, level of income simple regression will not work it will not give you a uh, clear picture right uh, quant and also the quantile regression provide a more complete picture as i told you if you have a distribution which is uh, uh, like uh, not normally distribution distributed and you, if you plot that and you will see uh, your error at uh, the your variability at your uh, different level of your predicted variable increase it's like a cone so if you fit a model a uh, simple regression it will pass through the mean which will not a true representative of your data so here you need a complete picture you want to see the you know the high end and the low end of your data right so you can use a quantile regression okay so suppose we have n pair of observation this is a population regression model y i is equal to beta q dot plus beta q one x i plus epsilon i where beta q naught beta q1 are the unknown population parameters as associated with qth quantiles and uh, epsilon qi is the error term right note that your q lies between 0 and 1 if you talk about a percentage it would be from 0 to 100 uh, let's suppose beta cap q naught beta cap q1 are the estimate of the correspond parameters right and these estimates can be obtained by minimizing the sum of sum of absolute errors remember in a simple linear regression uh, these estimates are uh, we can get these estimate by minimizing the sum of square errors right so here is the difference here here we minimize the absolute sum of errors so what beta cap q1 tells you very important take home message it is the estimated rate of change in specific quantile q in a response variable yi for one unit change in your predicted variable xi for example if your q is 0.5 which is median then beta uh, hat one is your estimated change in median of your response variable y for one unit change in your predictor variable x beta hat q naught again it's estimated specific quantile q for response variable y when your predictor variable x is zero keep it keep it mind this will not always be sensible but this is important for your model once you got your estimate you you can get this equation which is called a simple linear regression law equation how we can estimate all right so we know in ordinary least square uh, coefficient a b can be obtained by like based on your conditional mean of a response variable y i for a given x i whereas in quantile regression q beta hat q not beta hat q when based on the condition quantile 
of a response variable y given xi, right? And this can be obtained by minimizing the absolute deviation, absolute error, sum of absolute error, not sum of square of residual, sum of square of error. Uh, in as, as in instead of uh, using least square methodology, the quantile regression, computi regression computational implementation uses the linear programming methodology to estimate the regression coefficient. Right? Uh, there is a big derivation. We can derive that and come up with the estimates. But the objective not here is to show that uh, derivation. But keep in mind. We can use some kind of computer programming, linear program to get up with those these regression coefficients. Also, you know, it's a non-parametric approach. You don't have any distribution behind, right? Like a normal distribution. What happened? You won't get a standard error. Like if you have a ST, if mean is an estimator, you can get the standard error of the mean, right? You can. Any, anyone can made a, make an estimator, but the important is if you have the standard error, you have the distribution, right? It is useful then. Otherwise, uh, I don't think it's so useful. So this is also a non-parametric approach. So you, we don't have any distribution function. So we don't have a standard error. What would we do? There are some alternative method that can be used for that to estimate the standard error. And they are some kind of a, a sphericity function, rank method. Resampling or bootstrapping a very important method to estimate your standard error. So once you have your standard error, you can then uh, go for the statistical inference. Otherwise, okay, we took an example. We want to see the relationship between runs and balls. Uh, this is a true data uh, taken from the 100 players, top players. Uh, 10 players selected random and we want to build a model <coughs> and estimate the runs when a batsman plays 75 balls right so you can see plot this data here you can see this is an error right <coughs> you can see there is an error i'm sorry not that error there is an outlier right i can stop sharing so here uh, we fit a simple linear quantile regression in that model. So this is our population model. Population model means for all players, all 100 top players. And <clears throat> this is model for them. For the uh, sample data, we have uh, this equation, right? Instead of y, x, I used like real runs and form. So what we uh, do is what we did is uh, we use a software and uh, we fit three lines at uh, first quartile median and third quartile above and below the median right and these are the two uh, three uh, regression equations uh, quantile regression equations and this is our scatter plot you can see this is your <coughs> below average line this is on the average line and this is above every line every line we can fit one 99 lines right depend upon the situation or hypothesis all right so let's see the interpretation so what tells this 1.08 1.0 is the estimated median change median change in your runs in your response variable runs for a one unit change in your balls or one ball is thrown. Similarly, the interpretation of beta, we can say uh, the average median of runs is 46.587 when no ball is thrown, zero ball is thrown. Is it make sense? When no ball is thrown, a player has 46.58 runs, doesn't make sense. Because this zero is not in your range. Your range started with some kind of 40 to 71 right so this is not in our range so we cannot predict really but on the other side uh, on the high side we can predict but still with again at a certain certain range right then we estimated the player score when he plays 75 balls which is 128 
right? So that's it. Here's the code. Uh, you have to have uh, um, download this library first, package first, this package. Then you can run this and you can come up with those results and you can play around with these two. That's it for today. Thank you very much for watching. And if you have any question, let me know and we'll go from there. Bye bye.